Hey, brothers and sisters, what's up? This is the reluctant. <laughs> Lord, I can't even say my own name now. This is the reluctant Nabi back again. And on this video right here, I want this is going to be a comparison contrast, but this is going to exemplify the problems and why nothing will ever get fixed for Afro men unless we leave the media heads alone and the BAWs alone. All right. If we have sisters, sisters will know enough to let us handle this our way. Right. That means get on the sidelines and after we fix this thing, then we can deal with them and probably have a community in which they can bear children in where we can protect the children, protect the community, not just from crime but from wickedness all right as we were look um so i rolled across this a bunch of stuff comes up on and i was looking at a lot of dick gregory stuff and i'm with him on a lot of things didn't know i was until i heard him what he's saying is a lot of things that i basically um teach say preach however you want to say it Okay, so before I get into this real quick, let me greet everybody. Um Hardu Gudog, Ola Oi to the Bang, Vasas Lopes, Bonjour Mesami, Ked Bawani Konichiwa, Nihao Niama, Sani Bonani, Jambo Herbayagani, Asalam Alaikum, Shalom. Alright. Now I know I'm leaving something out, but I'm leaving it out on purpose. All right. But what I want to get into is that while going through all of this, while going through all of this, right? While looking through, to the, you're, I'm going to have the Young Turks in the, um, in the description box. Alright, I'm going to have the Young Turks in the description box. And I'm going to have the Roland Martin um, video in the description box. Okay, now, what we're talking about. You're going to see a contrasting difference. Now, the Roland Martin one, I am going to point out to you. Okay? The other one, the Young Turks, I want you to notice the difference with the guy is one guy speaking. Y'all get it? One guy speaking. I noticed something about Roland Martin's panels that's starting to disturb me, especially when he's speaking to issues that affect primarily Afro men. All right. And so as we get into that, um, my last greeting, greeting is Talofa Lava Soy Fula Sole. All right. To my Samoan brother. All right. Now, don't forget to look for those in the description box. Let me remind you to keep those thumbs up, like, share, subscribe. When you subscribe, click the notification bell. All right, my PayPal me and my cash app will be in the description box if you would like to help this channel in what we do. All right. Remember, you still always take care of yourself and family for, for first before you donate to anybody. All right, like they say on the plane and in the army, you put the mask on yourself so that you can think clearly enough to save others, period. So you save yourself financially before you can save others financially or help others financially. Same principle. All right, so let's get down to this. 
This is the video as it plays out. And I want you to pay attention. You shouldn't get them no information. That's illegal. It's a legal search. Um, let me say this right off the bat. A brother stepped up who knows a little thing about what's supposed to happen. He's armed with, yes, video camera, live cam. All right. He is also armed with knowledge. This is the kind of knowledge that Colin Kaepernick is teaching all over the United States with his Know Your Rights campaign. You know, the people that can't stand Colin Kaepernick because he's melanated but only halfway, not realizing the fact that they don't know what it is to be um, to have to be taken from your parents and go into a orphanage or group home only to be adopted by Caucasian people. And now you got that in identity crisis, but given that you had that kind of lifestyle, because of talents that you have, you have a whole bunch of these dusty simps come against the brother for doing some good in the neighborhood because they told the lines of the supremacists. Any dusty simp that you see in any remarks that come against Colin Kaepernick and uses, well, he got benched and that's when he knelt, he was still giving up millions of dollars at the time. And all of his check, after that last thing that got him to kneel, all of his check went into foundations to help brothers. So anytime you see them dusty dudes in any comment section, understand they are the Sambos. Remember, Uncle Tom was the good guy. All right, so let's move on. No, uh, no, he ain't got to answer no questions. He ain't got to answer no questions. It's no matter. It ain't on though right now. You didn't press the button. I know law, bro. If you ain't commit no crime, you ain't got no business right here asking no question, interrogating them. This is a legal detain. What crime was committed? Who would they say was watching? Who they said that did it? Who are you looking for? What's the person's name? What's the description of the person, officer? What's your badge number? What's your badge number? 161, okay. I'll be calling your office. They know who I am, Toy Battle. You have suspicion? You have suspicion? Well, you ain't supposed to ask that, though, because you're running. Notice he gave his name. This is going to be important. Keep in mind, he just gave his name, Troy Battle. He says that they know him down at the office really well. That means this dude is hounding these police. The way, and this is the plan, y'all. Y'all want justice? Y'all want justice? And pay attention to his last remark. I'm right now in Leeds. Yeah, you was free to go. He is free to go. He always free to go. And don't ask somebody else on Howard their name without them committing crimes. That is illegal. Y'all time is almost up. All right? Don't ask nobody their name and their ID. That's illegal. Yeah, everybody always good out here. We only good when you ain't out here manipulating people. Have a nice day. Stop scanning people's names. Find some real criminals. First off, before we jump in, find some real criminals. Understand what he said. Find some real criminals. In other words, it's never been about police not doing their job and looking for criminals and stopping criminal action and maybe... Uh, traffic violations and stuff because we were, we're we care about safety this has never been an issue the issue has always been that they're not looking for criminals understand this period and he, and he said he said i'm gonna call down to your uh to the office all right, I want y'all to understand this. All right, now, the guy, I want you to hear the Young Turks version and how he talks about this. And I want you, and I'm gonna, we're gonna dive into the Roland Martin way of dealing with this thing, okay? So, let's get rolling. Okay, so now, let's get into the Roland Martin show and i want y'all to pay attention to some things right and you'll understand why we can't get crap done 
right? And why people like Roy Martin will not help. And it is because we cannot stick to the message of the brothers in the street is because he conflates the message with the BAW. And I want you to pay attention carefully of what the woman, one of his guests says on his show. And in the description box, um, you'll see the link to his show. Just look down after the donation links. You'll see his link and then you'll see the Young Turks. Look at both of them and compare how both of them deal with the same situation and tell me who's standing up for the Afro man. Yeah, but it can't get signed by anybody, but, it's, but those Know Your Rights workshops are critically important. All right. And his point that he made is the NFL can tolerate people that uh, commit all manner of crimes from small ones to the most egregious to some that should end up um, to some people that should have ended up on a death uh, in, in a death chamber, death, death row, death row. Okay, they they tolerate all kind of crime, all kind of everything, but a, an, a man that is standing up for the rights of Afro men not to be taken out by police for having committed no crime or no serious crime. Oh, that is just too egregious for the NFL. And we gotta ban such a dude, and we gotta send a message to all the all of the rest of the sambos in the NFL, because there should have been a walkout, a group walkout by all of the Afro players, but for them the money was just too important. And this goes for the players' union; money is just too important. So the rights of Afro men don't matter, even those that are in football, because the same thing that happens to the regular brother in the street usually happens to them five years out of football. You're used up, now you're back to a regular person if you still have money. Because most of them go broke after five years. All right, unless you can be a um, sample sellout talking head on one of the NFL Caucasian sports network shows. Okay, we can't trust any of them, just like we can't trust him. Because we're talking about an issue with Afro men, an issue that affects primarily Afro men, and look at his panel. Remember I said there was a difference between the, the, the Caucasian guy and Roy Martin? The Caucasian guy seems to be more serious in speaking to our issues as Afro men. Roland Martin has a bunch of women on his panel that are not serious as to speaking to issues as Afro men because they're taught in their Caucasian jeebus. Oh, yeah, Let, let's look at this. I'm sorry, sorry but, you know, know it, it's, it's funny. funny. When, when I was, I was younger, younger, my mother used to always say, if, if you find, find yourself in a situation, situation don't act out. out. Just, Just give, give them what they want. want. If they, if they ask, ask for ID, you give it to them. And, and at first, when our kids were younger, we used to teach them the same things because that's what we were taught. That's what you do. So everything she knows, she was taught from her mom. And so instead of being taught from her dad, when you teach, dads used to teach their sons that some things you stand up for, even if it means you might get taken out of this plane of existence. Moms don't teach that. She teaches capitulate because it makes her feel better. But it does nothing for the community. It don't prohibit anything. It don't stop anything. A lot of the reasons why these females don't want to be judged because they know if a whole bunch of men stand up and start giving them righteous judgment, it will fix the community and it will stop their wickedness. One, because we won't choose them for anything anymore. But for the moment, no matter while no matter what these females could do, what they're about, they keep being brought up and being brought up to speak on male issues as if they're males or they lead men, then the community can never be fixed. This is egregious. Right? Let's, let's let her go on. So she said she learned from her mom 
And then she taught the same thing, but it didn't work. Let's hear her say it. If, 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 if someone in authority asks, asks you for your ID, you give it to them. If they ask you where you're going, you tell them. You, you, you comply. comply. Right. You comply. And somebody in authority, meaning that if a Caucasian man... This is what the this is what the black woman households taught. If the Caucasian man asks you for anything, you just capitulate. But the Afro men starting to, started to wake up and say, "Oh no, this ain't working." But, but today, today you, you can, can comply and still get shot or arrested. First of all, first of all. And she said, "Today, but this stuff has always been happening to Afro men. This is why we stopped complying." Understand this, the Black Panthers were criminalized, but they were teaching people how to obey the law, understand the law, and stand up to people when they were breaking the law against them. Remember, most of them were college educated, lawyers. All right, keep this in mind. And then when the BAW start to lead the homes, they taught capitulate. They taught their daughters how to exploit every last financial law from welfare all the way up to student loans. And then exploit some man to get um, help to pay for all these things that they've done to themselves to alter their opinion, appearance from Afro proud Afro women to Negro peons. And then they taught them how to use their babies as a check and how to trap a man into 18 years of financial ruin through them. And each of these things were devastating to the building up of a community if you wanted to build a community with good Afro men. Nope, they wanted to lay with thugs, have the good men pay for them laying with thugs and pay for the thugs. And then as the thugs start getting most of this. Now, let's be clear. Most of the um, ravaging of the community is coming to the thugs, right? And it's bleeding out to all Afro men. But the thugs was the excuse that everybody used. Why? Because they took the righteous, the, the BAW threw the righteous men out, the men that would study, the men that would know their rights, the men that would say, no, we'll, we got this, we'll protect the community. Like that brother just did. All right? Now, in this breath, this woman says this, but she says something else in another breath. But let's finish. So, so, we talk about the Central Park Five. Oh, yeah. One, 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 the, 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 the Corey, the young brother, was not on the list. Yeah, 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 why don't you go ahead and uh, uh, call. All right, so that's the Central Park Five. Let's get back to Mrs. Pastor. Now, understand this, too. She thinks she's a leader, but how are you a leader and a pastor Right? How are you a pastor as a woman? When clearly your Bible says that the head of woman is man, if you use the New Testament, and if you use the Old Testament, it said to the woman, the man shall rule over you. So how are you now the spiritual head of anything in any community that has one man in it? Oxymoron, or how about plain moronic? Yeah, but it can't get signed by anybody. But it's the now, I'm going to point out something else she said that you have to see for yourself. After saying all that, know your rights, right? But then she said, but that don't work. And some of the times you just have to capitulate and do whatever the Caucasian police officer tells you to do and pray to Jesus and let God work it out. Okay, well, that's two different individuals. Do you let God work it out or do you pray to Jesus? Because if you're praying to Jesus, God ain't going to work crap out for you. It's because you have chosen another ma a mighty one before his face. If that's if you're talking about the God of the commandments. Oh, see, they, they're not going to look. Oh, yeah, I forgot. They don't read the commandments anymore. That don't matter to the new wave Christians. Neither does the New Testament either. Because, again, the New Testament says the head of woman is man. The head of man is um, 
man is Christ, the head of Christ is the Father, right? There's that whole breakdown by Paul, right? So they don't even listen to that. Understand? So how is it that these women can speak to any issue of Afro men? There was another significant problem on the Roland Martin show, the, a, a most egregious problem. And this is why we cannot fix anything if the B.A.W. is involved. Pay attention to this. All right. The woman in the black with the plaid skirt. Watch the gymnastics that she does on this issue that affects mainly males. And I want you to see Roy Martin's expression because all the time something affects male. One of them, and this is something that almost exclusively affects males. They don't stop females like this just on the block like that. And everybody knows this. In general, they don't. Every once in a blue moon when there's an activity that uh, a female might get stopped. Just randomly, like if there was a big party or something. But no, generally we know that this is what they do to men. Watch this. He's the guy. I love He's the guy. <laughs> now, I, I they love him, but they wouldn't want to be with him. If he's a good man that works. Period. Because dudes that actually stand up in the community have a hard time with these women right here. And whatever he does, right, they'll ruin it. As soon as they get upset at something he, they think he should have did for them or he did for them. Or to them. In their feelings. Yeah. So... <laughs> Well, I think we all need a man like that. I wish he identified himself. <laughs> now, remember, I said pay attention to him saying his name. This woman was so into how he was talking that she didn't understand what he was saying. Understand this. The woman was so into him just talking and being boisterous to the police that he could have been talking nonsense that could have got him shot and she would have been like well whatever right understand this she wasn't listening because he clearly gave his name everybody heard him give his name the preacher woman did the other woman did watch Roy martin's face after she says this next piece Priceless. What did he say? I forgot his name. He said his name. Like they know me at the police station. Well, I need to know him in Philadelphia. I need to know him in Philly because what he just dropped was a whole list of nuggets, information, and more so education for everyone, right? Because again, these brothers are growing up and sisters. Because we. You see what I'm saying? Whoop! There it is. There it is. These women try to include themselves when everything that happens to men as if it happens to them and it's not happening to them. This is the problem with the BAW. In many cases, these BAWs are the cause of it. One of the biggest arguments and deflection tactics these BAWs have when we're talking about their choices in men and them having all these babies these women like to come and say, well, the men aren't taking care of their children when statistically all the research that was done shows that the Afro men in general take care of their children better than the Caucasians and the Hispanics. We were compared in a study with it was the Afro men, Caucasian and Hispanic. I wish they would have put the Chinese in there. They probably would have kicked all of our butts. All right, because you see they have whole family owned restaurants and stuff like that. All right, so then we get into this, right? Then the next thing, when you disprove one of their dusty argument, they say, you're using a white man's statistics. And I tell them, well, you're using a white man's statistics to bash us, so how come I can't use the same statistics? Um, well, no, you're using white men's talking points from 
talking heads on TV that don't use the st statistics. They talk feeling and let you get away with feelings. They don't use the statistic because this is what I said to her next. I said, you're angry because when people do the research, they find out that you BAWs are liars. And then I said, not only that, I go to blackgenocide.org to verify the findings of the Caucasians. Understand this. Right. See, these women are always trying to include themselves in in on our stuff. They're either bashing us and I call it bashing. We don't bash them. We're calling out unrighteousness and injustice to the Afro man committed by the B.A.W. And this is how, you know, we don't bash them. It's because we call out the simp samples and the sellouts along with them. So we don't call out just them like they do to us. We're calling out anybody that commits wickedness to good men and the children of good Afro men. See, that's not bashing. That's called judgment. And these women don't like that because the only people they feel like has the right to judge them is a Caucasian man in a black robe. But other than that, they be like, don't judge, don't judge. They wait for Jesus to judge them is because they know he don't exist. Oh, you better believe they know he don't exist. If these women had any fear of the Most High or of Jesus or any respect for Jesus, they would act better than they act. But they don't. That preacher, she wouldn't be a preacher, but she is. Remember, I do not fear Understand this, brothers. Get this. Understand this. You don't understand anything else. I do not fear God. I do not fear the Most High. I respect the Most High. Why would I fear somebody that gave us the commandments out of love? out of preservation that if we listened to us, we would live more prosperously, prosperously and have a good life. The commandments were meant to protect us, not to bind us. I am not an enemy of the Most High. So therefore, I do not have to fear him. I respect him, so I'm going to Follow the commandments, just like I would respect a strong father. I know that disobedience to some things might get me punishment, but I don't fear him because I know that he means well. But the Most High gave us everything out of love. How you fear somebody you love? These women have no respect. They have no fear. They know their Caucasian Jeebus don't exist because if they believe he exists, they would have better behavior. But they don't. He can stop too. A See that face? When she said, black women are getting stopped too. One if she'll be back on the show. He's about as tired of it as the rest of us should be. Brothers and sisters, at the end of the day, and I think the sisters recognize this, the black women are not queens of anything. They should not be ruling anything. Everything is an abysmal failure in the Afro community because these women think that they are rulers and that they're the spiritual head of something. But they're nothing. They get these degrees, and these fast, fancy titles by way of the same oppressive system that the Most High says we're supposed to be away from and separated from. All right. I'm about tired of all these females on all these panels that mean there's no good. With that said, I'm out. Tell me what you think about it in the comment section.